Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. It has been a while and I'm really sorry about that. I went home for the holidays and then came back and I've been taking a class here at UNM over the break. So it's been a bit uh, crazy with that and getting back into training and everything. So um, I've been a bit MIA on my channel, so I apologize for that. Um, but I posted a Instagram story and on both of my Instagrams, which if you are not following, these are the usernames and you should go follow them. I have a food account and then uh, a normal one, <laughs> so you should follow both of them. Um, I post a lot on there, so yeah. Um, but I asked you guys what you wanted to know and a lot of you kind of just wanted to know about my time here in the NCAA thus far and about transferring and you know the challenges that I faced and stuff like that. And, um, this has been something I've been really wanting to talk about for a while, um, but honestly I had no idea how to go about it, so, um, I thought I'd give it a shot, and if you guys have any other questions, um, feel free to comment below or, you know, DM me or anything like that, and I'll, you know, answer them on there, or maybe do another video on here, I don't know, but, um, yeah, I thought I would kind of start with the basics, so, um, as most of you know, I transferred um, this fall from the University of Washington in Seattle, um, which is a Pac-12 school to here at UNM this fall after competing at UW for two years. So I competed there my freshman year, which was in, I think it was the fall of 2015 until the summer of 2017. Um, and then I transferred here this fall and I've started here. So, um, you know, I loved my time at UW. I had a great experience um, my freshman year. I was super excited about going. Um, I think just, you know, the signing process and being from Canada and going to a, you know, Division One school on a scholarship is just so exciting. And um, yeah, I was really, really excited about going there and was it loved the school, loved everything, and um, really bought into the program. And I would say that, um, you know, I had a really good experience. My fall of my freshman year, I think I was 70-something at um, Nationals and Cross, which was okay. Um, didn't got a little bit um, ahead of myself during indoor and pulled my calf and didn't really run very fast, but um, ran like 16, 15 indoors. Um, had a pretty good outdoor, made the national meet in the steeple, and I got ninth. Um, so one spot from All-American, which was kind of a bummer. And then um, ended it off really well. Like, I went to World Juniors, and I got sixth there in the steeple. I ran 944, which which was huge for me. Um, I talked about running Olympic standard all fall, all indoor and all outdoor to the coaches, and I really wanted to do it and I just didn't do it I ran like 9.59 10 flat like every race pretty much um and that was really hard and um I think I just wanted to be so good and be able to do that and just be able to like have that for myself and know that I was you know capable of that and um yeah I think I got really really obsessed with running um, kind of after that and um, really started to change you know little things um, it slowly started like you know wanting to eat healthy and stuff like that and um, I think as a distance runner everyone goes through um, moments where they deal with body image and with fueling and um, I think for a lot of people it can go one way or the other and it can be um, either something you go through and you you know you have the thoughts and um, you kind of just deal with that and every day is hard and I'm not saying uh, people don't go through it and it's not like the same as experience as other I think everyone goes through it in the instant way because um, it is a thing you know not just distance runners but other athletes and everyone and even people who aren't athletes like go through it and it's really hard um, and I think for myself um, I put a lot um, of weight into um, 
my self-esteem and my self-worth into running. And I think that was one thing that was really hard for me um, when it came to fueling and when it came to performance is that I just cared so much about running and wanted to be so good. And I was willing to do whatever it took to do it. And I think I got to a point where I had run really fast in the summer and wanted to do all these things in the fall and felt that I, um, you know, had to be a certain way and look a certain way and do a certain thing and run a certain time and place a certain place. And it became, it literally ate, started to eat me alive. Um, and I started to, you know, look at things that I could control and that I could change and that I thought was what needed to change in order for me to be a better runner. And, um, you know, for me, that was food and that was fueling and that was weight. And um, I really, really, really struggled. Um, it was really hard. My sophomore year in the fall was probably one of the worst moments one of the worst times of my life um and it just got worse and it continued into the winter and it continued into the spring and um I was not Charlotte and it was really really hard I was not the person I wanted to be or who I was and I was not the friend and the teammate and athlete and um, I was not myself and that was really hard for me. Um, I just cared about running. That was all I cared about. And that's really hard as, um, an athlete who is away from home and, um, just wants to be the best and just wants the coaches to know that and, you know, wants to put on this facade to everyone around her that, she wants it and that I wanted to be the best and that I was willing to do whatever it took um, to do that and I like I said like I literally ate myself alive doing it and I needed to give up running for a while um, after the fall because I was not healthy mentally physically emotionally I was I was done I was fried um, I started running really well right away in the fall, which I think, well, not think, which was really hard for me to let go of because I was running so well um, while treating myself so terribly and while starving myself basically from life and from enjoying it and everything like that. And um, I got to a point where I only thought about running and I didn't care about school and friends and things like that and I was not a person I was a shell of a thing that just went to practice and checked off the box and you know came back the next day and um yeah I I took a break from running the entire winter and you know tried to figure some things out and get some help and um I came back in the spring um, trying to put on this thing that I was okay and that everything was fixed and everything was perfect and um, just didn't want to be a problem anymore to the, you know, to the team and was trying to act like everything was okay and everything wasn't and I was still really struggling with it with coming back to, you know, an environment where um, it is so prevalent and it's terrible how prevalent it is, but it is and um, I Didn't know how to deal with that and Became really like tried to deal with it and like suppress it in a way and not talk about it like I just wouldn't talk about it to anyone when I came back and um, tried to race at Stanford and dropped out at 3k because I I don't know I just shut off and that was something that was really hard um, because running wasn't going well and I didn't know what to do and um, it was it was really hard it was probably no it was the worst times of my life I went through um, quite a few months of absolute hell and I don't wish that upon anyone because that was um, a really hard time for myself a really hard time for my family um, for my team mates, my team, my coaches, um, 
it was really hard and I um, I look back at that and wish that I could have protected everyone from going through that because I don't know how people did it and how people stuck with me and um, I'm very thankful for that um, for the people who helped me through and supported me no matter what I had great a great nutritionist at UW and um, who even to the day still texts me and I think that um, having someone that you trust and um, feel like safe with talking with is really important for anyone who goes through anything um, running life school related at all um, it doesn't have to be necessarily about food or body image but just about anything you're going through like if you're struggling mentally with anything mental health I think is something that is very prevalent in um, college not even just division one sports not even just NCAA sports or anything like it is a serious issue and it should be treated like that um, it should be treated just the same as you know a stress fracture is or um, when someone pulls a hamstring or anything like that like it is a injury it is and I think that it should be more talked about and you know discussed because it is really serious and it is just it's honestly more dangerous than you know a stress fracture like yes that is a broken bone but um, mental health is something that you know I've been reading the book what made ratty run um, recently and it is a serious issue and it's it is deadly and I think that um, there is more to life than running and there is more to life than um, you know getting good grades and running fast and looking a certain way like being able to live your life every day and be happy and not feel um, trapped in this um, in your own brain and in your own little world that you've you know created for yourself that has to be you have to do this a certain way in order to feel good about yourself and I think that it's so suffocating and I wish I could you know protect everyone from going through that and um, you know maybe one day that um, it will be less of an issue but I doubt that and um, I don't know it's really hard um, every day is a battle and I just want people to know that it is okay to struggle and um, you know people around you will care for you and love you if you are willing to be truthful and um, you know ask for help um, there is no shame in struggling and needing a little bit of extra support in you know in anything and I think that that's one thing that's really hard and in, at the end of the day it's not worth it running is not worth that um, you know I love running and I hope to do it for years to come and um, at the end of the day I want to be really good and you know anyone who goes through the NCAA wants to be really good and wants to be the best but it's not worth giving yourself up and giving you know sacrificing your life and your well-being and your mental state for it and I think that we put it in our brain that that is what you have to do that you have to be a runner and you have to do it a certain way and, um, you know you see people doing things and you make assumptions out of it you know you see people posting um, what they eat or what they look like or what they're doing or what their training is and you think that you have to do that and you have to be like that in order to be successful or do more or you know not eat that or not do that and um, I think at the end of the day everyone is a different human being and everyone needs something but everyone needs to be happy and everyone needs to be able to you know wake up in the morning and be full and like have energy and be able to go to class and be a student um, and an athlete and be a friend and be a teammate and you know not feel like that they have to give up themselves in order to be that and I think 
Um, I've done that. I'm sure many, many people have done that. And it's really, really hard. And it's really sad. And um, at the end of the day, when you're happy, you are your best self. And um, I know for myself that I run the best when I am happy. And I am laughing. And I am full of energy. Um, because it makes it fun. And it makes it easy. Running is so hard when you're doing it. Um, day in and day out just to check it off and um, when at every practice and every um, time you go out to race you're worried about some specific person or you're feeling like you have to prove yourself and race in order to be you know worth having there um, and that's that's exhausting and by the time you get to halfway through your season or to the end of the season or a year later you will fall apart and for myself I think that running you know pretty terribly last fall um, was a point I needed in my life because it taught me that I wanted to be more um, than just running to run I wanted to run because I loved it and because I wanted to do it and I enjoyed it um, and I think that's something that's been really amazing about my transition um, here to UW and just um, over the last year is that I really hated running for a while but I was so obsessed with with it and with you know getting out there and being the best and having that and being able to you know prove to you know a, an environment and you know to myself and you know portraying onto other people that I felt that I had to prove to them that I was worthy of it and um, I think that's what's been really um, the best thing about why I ran well this fall and um, was able to be successful and make it to the end of the season and be um, able to perform my best when it mattered um, which is something I haven't done because I fell back in love with a sport that I have committed my every day to and I think that that's something that you need in order to do this because it is hard distance running sports in general at this level are not easy and when you are beating yourself up every day it's even harder and when you isolate yourself and you put it all inside and try and internalize it and you suppress it and you don't want to talk about it and um, you basically beat yourself up about it. It is so difficult and it is terrible. And um, I think that one thing that I've really found beneficial over the last year, um, which someone asked me how I deal, how I kind of deal with stuff and what I do to kind of work through things is that I started writing a lot and I started journaling and I have an entire journal over the last year um, and a little like private blog that I've written um, just to like have it for myself and you know I have contemplated about posting some of the stuff just for people um, I don't know like me maybe that are kind of going through something and need something and just to know that you're not alone and that you're not alone in it and that you know, you have people there that are willing to talk to you about it and that, um, you know, you will, everyone will get through it and you can get through it if you decide you want to. Um, I had someone say to me last year that it's not that you can't do it, it's that you won't and having that moment where you switch that mindset and that, you know, I won't do this for some reason and what is that reason and why am I doing this and you know it's not that easy it's not like a switch that you're like okay it's not that I can it's that I won't and so now I'm gonna do it like I wish it was that easy and it wasn't and it took me a really long time and you know still every day is really hard um, and every day you have to you know subconsciously be like I want to be my best self and I want to be happy and I want to be able to you know 30 years from now next season next year you know um, be a healthy human being and be able to have a family and be able to go for a run when I'm um, out with my kids or something like that and um, yeah I don't know 
I've contemplated about releasing the stuff, getting back to that point, but um, I really get it because it's so in the brain and it's, you know, something that you normalize and make your every day and it's not, it starts off as, you know, you looking at other people and making assumptions, but then it becomes something that you can't shut off in your brain and it's about something that you have now stuck in there and it doesn't matter what anyone says or what anyone else is telling you or doing or showing you and you're like, no, like it doesn't work. You're like, you know what? I don't care. I am this, it's gonna work for me. I'm gonna make it work. You're not me. I can do anything. I am, I can make it work. And you know, at a point you can be like, no, like you're right. Like I know that, I know that, mm -hmm. and you even know it yourself, but you just can't do it. Um, and it's hard because you make it something that you use to deal and cope with. And um, it makes you feel safe. Like you make it safe for yourself and you make it, um, you know, unfortunately it becomes, you know, a piece of you. Like it's something that you bring into yourself and that you make a part of you. And um, I'm not saying that you can't take that away, but it is hard. You're, you're taking away something that you've used to cope with. And for a lot of people, it's a lot of things. Um, people have different ways of coping with different things. And, um, you know, people don't cope the same way that I would cope and I don't cope the same way someone else would, but, um, it's taking that and, you know, having to find out other ways that don't feel safe. And that's really, really scary. Um, and it's something you don't want to do because you don't trust it. Um, and one thing I remember, it's like my, my transfer, for example, um, I was going from a program where I had a, I had success. I did. I ran, um, Olympic standard my freshman year in the steeple. And that was, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more. Um, at that time, like I'd come in and I'd stayed healthy and I'd run well and ran well in the summer when I was representing Canada at World Juniors and I was so excited about that and I had accomplished what I wanted to that um, outdoor season um, time-wise and I wanted more and it was scary to then leave that because I didn't know where I was going to go and I didn't know if anyone was going to want me after the fall I had had. Um, I had run really well at the beginning and then completely um, withered away in results and got to nationals and was in last place for a good chunk of the race. Um, and I thought I was done running at that point and I didn't run all winter, um, d didn't even run, um, tried to figure some things out and didn't feel like it was working. I felt like I was getting worse. I felt like I was um, completely going against myself for not running and that was really really hard for me to deal with for a really long time because I didn't know who I was outside running um, and I didn't know what was going to happen and whether or not I was going to be able to ever come back from it and be able to be the person that I want, was my freshman year at World Juniors and whether or not I was going to be able to ever run faster and that was terrifying for me because there was nothing I wanted more than to win a national title and you know make an Olympic team and do these things and I felt like I was like giving it up and it was really scary um, and I was trusting in something that I had no idea um, well tr trusting in something that I you know given up and said that it wasn't going to work anymore and I had put my faith in something else and um, I was terrified and I didn't trust it and I didn't want to do it and um, I tried to make it work and that was part of it. I didn't trust it and I tried to race in the spring one time and it, it blew, I blew up and that was even scarier because I was like, right, yeah, I'm done running and I have to um, figure that out and I'm not going to run anymore and um, you know decided that no I was going to give it another chance and um, 
kind of needed to figure that out and unfortunately needed to leave the program that I was in and have a fresh start and be able to try again and you know let go and be the person that I had said I was and wanted to be and knew I could be and um, I was trusting in a program that I had no idea what was going to do for me and whether or not it was right for me or whether it was going to work and uh, you know I had heard great things from people like Courtney who um, you know talked to me through a lot and you know told me a lot of things about UNM and a lot of things just about um, you know professional running and I really look up to her and she's a great person in my life and I'm really thankful for her because she's helped me through a lot and um, I was trusting in something I didn't know and when I got here I had to give up um, you know what I knew and put faith into coaches that I had had never seen me run um, in a year and hadn't um, you know had race results in a year and the race result I had was not great my fall was not good so um, it was scary and I hadn't raced in so long which was so abnormal for me and I hadn't um, you know trained and competed and um, I think that's one thing about coming to the NCAA and going to a new coach in general is you need to trust in it because if you don't it won't work and you know that's within reason if you you know give it a shot and it still doesn't work and it still doesn't feel right then trust your gut in that and I think that's something people don't do is um, you know it's so exciting the NCAA is so exciting and I agree with that I've had a great experience um, I mean it's been super hard at times but I think it is the place for me and um, it is a great opportunity for people not from the United States to come and race the best people here and race the best people worldwide and it really sets you up for racing in the future when you want to make an Olympic team and um, yeah I think that you need to trust in what you're doing and trust in yourself and trust the process as cheesy as that is but that was something that I um, even this new year is a resolution of mine is to do just trust in myself and trust in the process and trust that um, at the end of the day if I'm doing everything that I need to do that if it's meant to happen it will happen and if not you know I just keep working at it and at the end of the day like if I do everything I can and it still doesn't work out that I need to be able to you know look within myself and be like you know what I did everything I could and I performed my best and I fueled my best and I did all the right things and I worked out the best I could and you know it it still just wasn't right and that's okay like and as hard as that is and you know still sometimes like I want to you know still be so competitive and I want it to work but um, at the end of the day like when I'm 40 or 50 years old I'm not going to be running like competitively and um, I have to have other things in my life and be healthy and you know be able to get to that point and be you know happy with myself and live with myself and know that um, I'm not just a runner and at this point running is something I do and something I care so much about and right now is my life well is a part of my life and it is a big part of my life but when it comes down to it it is not who I am and that's been something that's been really hard for me um, to deal with because at a point you feel like it has to be who you are and everything you do in order to be good at it and that's really scary um, but yeah, I don't know if any of that made sense, but that's just been something that, um, people have asked me a lot about and just like with, you know, running and the fear of that and the fear of transferring and, um, yeah, the challenges of being a student athlete, it is hard and, um, yeah, I mean, school and School is hard in general and, you know, adding in the stress of running and adding the stress of a social life is really hard, but I think balance with that is is something that you have to figure out for yourself and whether or not you need to um, 
add something else in that, you know, takes yourself out of running um, and find something else that you're really passionate in. Um, but for me, it's been, you know, not getting too obsessed and serious with it and, you know, allowing myself to enjoy other aspects of life. Um, and I run my best when I do that. And, you know, I still work really, really hard at running and I want it to be super successful. But at the end of the day, like I've said, like, I'm, I want to be happy and I want to be full of run and life and have, you know, 30 years down the road being healthy and have a family and have a job and be, you know, content with that and be able to look back and be um, proud and happy of what I've done and what I've accomplished. But, um, yeah, I don't know if that made any sense. But, um, yeah, the other thing was injuries and that's a complete thing on its own and that's been really hard. I've been really lucky, knock on wood, um, that I haven't had too many injuries. I broke my heel um, in June of last year and sat out all summer training. I was on the bike all summer and that was really difficult because I was transferring and I wasn't running. Um, and that was really scary as well. But um, yeah, I was on a bike for a very long time. But um, just trusting that, you know, I've run before and all the miles and all the workouts that I've done in years past um, are still there and you know you've done those and your body knows how to do it and I'm not saying that it's a snap of the fingers you're right back into it but I think for myself that um, I mean I run way too fast when I run on my own sometimes a lot of the time so I knew that I could um, get back into shape as long as I was slow with it and was doing everything else that I needed to do. Um, but yeah, have fun with running. Running is fun. Teams are fun. I'm very thankful and very privileged for the teams that I have been on and that I've been a part of from high school until now. And um, I've had some amazing coaches and amazing people in my life. And um, I've had a lot of aspects and you know, pieces of it, and um, UW was a piece of my history, and my high school was a piece of my history, and UNM is now a piece of my history, and um, it's all part of a story. <laughs> um, and maybe one day, someone told me I would write a book, and you know what, maybe one day I will, but um, if you have any questions or anything you want to know more about or need help with, please comment or DM me on Instagram, like I've said, and, um, yeah, enjoy running, because it's hard if you don't, so, yeah, um, I will see you guys in my next video.